it might have come as a surprise, I guess. He had lasted this long, midway through the season, and then you fire him. Now, he only won one game in his first two full seasons in Cleveland, but the Browns are more competitive this year. But I talked about this prior to the start of the season with the friction with offensive coordinator Todd Haley. On hard knocks, they showed you just a little bit, just a snippet. They opened a window just a little bit for you to look in. And you realize if that's something they allowed you, because the Browns did have editorial control from what I was told, that if they showed you a little bit of that, how much more was really going on behind the scenes? But it's the Browns. No need to get caught up in particulars. The bottom line is Cleveland is where coaches, usually at least their careers, go to die. Uh, Mike Pettin, Rob Chudzinski, Pat Shermer, Eric Mangini, Romeo Cornell, and Shermer is back with the ranks of uh, the head coaches with the Giants, but it's obvious the organization's problems run deeper than the head coach. You might start with the owner there, and now the Browns have an exciting young quarterback in Baker Mayfield. It does feel like they're building something there, and there's a chance to reverse decades of futility if you get the right coach in there. But if you're the right coach, do you want to go in there with maybe the wrong owner? You got a good GM, a proven GM in John Dorsey, and you're all in on Baker Mayfield. It's something that I talked about yesterday. I've talked about it a few times on the program. It's the development of a young quarterback. A lot of it is based on who's your coach and offensive coordinator, how steady is that relationship, and then offensive line and skill positions. There's a lot of ingredients that go into being a great quarterback. You have to have some kind of relationship there. You have to have somebody who is offensive-minded. I use Jared Goff as the poster boy. He was going to be a bust under Jeff Fisher. Well, Jeff Fisher is not an offensive-minded coach. Sean McVay comes in, and all of a sudden, Jared Goff, nobody has said anything about him being a bust. It's that quick. It's that simple. Simple's maybe not the right word because you still have to find that guy. And finding that guy for Cleveland who wants to go into that situation, even though I got a steady GM, I believe, a guy who has a true, uh, proven track record, I'm not uh, convinced that that owner knows what he's doing. Now, if you can get him to stay out of the mix, then you got a chance here. But you do have some pieces here, and I do think there's been momentum with the Cleveland Browns. But what do you do next? We'll find out. I like that to Jimmy Haslam, the owner of the Browns, said, you know, I, I guess I'll take the blame for what's happened here. Well, that's big of you. You, you brought in Hugh Jackson. You kept you. Like, why did you keep Hugh Jackson in the first place? You're, you're finally competitive, and it feels like there's a little bit of momentum, and you bring in Todd Haley. Look, if an outsider like me says, man, I, this isn't going to work, it's just not going to work with these personalities. Because Todd Haley probably feels like, I know more football than you do. I want to be the head coach. Hugh Jackson probably says, you know what? I'm still the head coach. Listen to me. The d- dysfunction going on in there, and you're bringing back a guy who did not prove himself to be a head coach. And then you're going to go, yeah, you know what? Let me give him another year. You know, maybe he wins uh, two or three games this year. It's still no reason to have him back. But if you're you're going to bring in, if you're going to draft a quarterback and put all of your eggs in that basket, then you must bring in people who will make him better. And two people who are going to get along with each other. How did you think that that was going to work out? If I tell you in the preseason, I don't see this working out. You should know that, too. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.